This is a cartoon which arguably is putting a spotlight on just how big this pair have become, rightly or wrongly. Now, they might not like the shape of that size, but they'll feel flattered by the airtime well, they're being I don't know. I mean, you, you know, you must, big, big doesn't necessarily equal popular as this. Uh, there's been a the new US publication Newsweek has yeah. released a survey commissioned about the royal family and their popularity and almost everybody saw their popularity drop after the release of Spare. Um, <laughs> but in particular, apparently, the Sussexes with his, Harry's net approval rating down minus 10 points and that's down since January. Meghan minus 17. What, what do you make of that? I think one of the contradictions in Spare was that Harry is trying to sort of shed the skin, the prince skin, and become the person and seamlessly move into the world of Californian celebrity. But actually, he's outed himself as really a royalist. He can't kind of get away from it. He doesn't want to blow up the institution. He says himself in interviews. So there's this feeling of the contradiction at the heart of his thesis. What's it all about, Harry? And yeah. I think he doesn't even understand that. But again, we go back to history. We go back to the abdicated king. It's very, very hard to walk away from the royal family. And that's where I have, I do have a little bit of sympathy for Harry. Mm. So I think that um, he will have hoped that the publication of the book will have increased his popularity. It will have given um, the readers a sort of insight into him and, he, and made him more popular. So the fact that it's now plummeting um, really is well, interesting. It's fascinating, isn't it? You mentioned <clears throat> Kyle, the, one of the main characters in South Park, and he's quoted in it as saying, you know, one of the kids says they don't care about some dumb prince and his stupid wife. Do you think that might be a bit near the knuckle for Americans now? <sighs> I don't know, it's, it's certainly very rude. Uh, well, Tessa, the author of the piece in Newsweek points out that Americans appear to be turning away from the Sussexes and back to the royals. And, you know, we've got the coronation coming up. The focus will naturally this, be more on UK royals. This was always going to be, I think, the unsolvable conundrum for Harry and Meghan. You shed off a state institution like monarchy, which is timeless. Yes, it's kind of stuck in a chronological hinterland, but it is so well protected. It is so well supported. It, it is us to an extent. It is a huge part of our British identity, this constitutional monarchy. If you walk away from that, how do you exist? How do you finance yourself? What is your raison d'etre? In order to make waves, you constantly have to actually be in the news to generate agency. Whereas someone like Kate and William, they can poodle along and they might fall out of the news headlines, except of course on Palace Confidential, and nobody really bothers because they are timelessly, you know, heir to the throne, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I don't see any way out of that trap for Harry and Meghan, unless, for instance, she went back to acting or something. Well, mm. looking at the wider royals, Richard, some of these figures, Camilla has a net zero rating. It just makes it sound like a bank asset, doesn't it? <laughs> Charles has plus 11. Oh, Prince Charles has actually, from this whole debacle, has come out of it reasonably well, I think. Well, he's yeah, he's been quite quiet, really, hasn't he, on the whole thing. But uh, Kate, Catherine and William, uh, well, William's at plus 28 and Catherine's at plus 32. What do I you mean, think of that? It's great. I mean, that's... I think, you know, they were determined not to react to Harry's memoirs and to the Netflix series, not to give a running commentary and just get on with doing what they do. You know, if that means um, you know, making the visits we've been seeing, and, and I think that's where you get respect. You just carry on doing what the royals have always done and, and people will respect that. And the fact they don't give their views and they're prepared to look a bit silly. This week, for example, we saw the Princess of Wales trying and um, failing to make a pancake on Shrove Tuesday. We've all and, been there. <laughs> exactly. And so that's what we think, you know, and, and that um, I think increases affection for them rather than the sort of um, navel gazing. But that's and the because they've got a day job. You know, mm. they are protected by this extraordinary shell that is, is the institution of monarchy. And that was the ill thought through part of the Montecito project. I don't see where it ends. Mm. Thank you for watching, but don't forget to click here to subscribe to our Royals channel for Palace Confidential, which brings you the latest royal news, views and gossip. See you there.